السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us to grant us goodness in this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us the few good deeds that we've done in our lives. May Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. May He grant us freedom from the fire. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of many important lessons. And we do know Surah An-Nur is filled with a lot of guidance. And in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us that when we have disputes between us, we should resolve them and solve them in a matter that is ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is normal for us to have misunderstandings, even within the home. Sometimes you may have a misunderstanding. Similarly, when it comes to community members, when it comes to members of the Muslim ummah, it is possible. We will definitely have a few misunderstandings, perhaps some disputes. Let us never let shaitan make the dispute such that we cannot solve it, we cannot resolve it. There is always a solution. Remember that sometimes we need to be bigger than the problem and we need to give in for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, if there is great destruction for the ummah as a result of us giving in, we don't give in. We have to stand in for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the protection of the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. But there are people whom they will call you to solve their problems in accordance with that which Allah has revealed when it suits them. When it does not suit them, they are far away. They want to seek another way of solving the problem. Perhaps they will go to the courts. Perhaps they will go elsewhere. Perhaps they will choose a different method altogether. This applies when it comes to laws of inheritance as well. It applies when it comes to matters of dispute regarding divorce, child custody and access, etc. And it applies in so many different aspects of living. Verse number 48 of Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ When they are called to resolve their disputes in accordance with the, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find a group from amongst them turning away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly, when the right of theirs or when they are achieving something by going to the solution that Allah has provided, they rush there very fast. They are quick to tell you, let's go and sort it out according to what Allah says. Because they know that if I go that way, it's going to be on my side. When it's not on my side, I go elsewhere. Allah says, إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا The qualities of the true believers. The true believers are those whom when they are called to resolve a matter in accordance with how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided or with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided, they would say, we heard and we have adopted. We have surrendered. We have accepted whether it is for you or against you in a material way it will always be for you in the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i might lose a little bit of money according to me but if that was the solution that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had declared i'm in a win-win situation i can never lose the same applies to custody of children the same applies to access of the children the same applies to the laws of inheritance you can never lose if you fulfill what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you don't it might seem like you've gained something but long term there is a great loss may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding that was verse number 48 up to verse number 51 of surah An nur and towards the end of that surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns those who go against the instruction of the messenger. Yet again, Allah is telling us that it's not only the Quran that you should be following, but even the instruction of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is considered revelation and it is divine. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So he says, verse number 63 of that surah, 
فليحذر الذين يخالفون عن أمره أن تصيبهم فتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم Warn those who go against the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they will be tested with a great test or a painful punishment will befall them. That's why we always say when something disastrous happens in our lives, it's not necessary that that's a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we just cannot handle it and we find ourselves having lost contentment, perhaps we have done something wrong in our lives. Perhaps we've deserved it. Maybe we've wronged a human being. Maybe we have gone against the instruction of Allah. This is why one of the best ways of helping yourself or saving yourself from the punishment of Allah is to seek forgiveness. Keep on seeking forgiveness. Ask Allah again and again. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Throughout the day, 100 times and more. That's what the Prophet ﷺ used to do, yet he didn't need it. With us, we need it, but we don't do it. Did you know if you seek Allah's forgiveness, even if the punishment was about to fall on you, he will hold it back. Allahu Akbar. He makes that quite clear. Allah would not punish them while they are seeking forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. What a beautiful way of saving ourselves. Something happens, disastrous, start saying, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, I've done wrong. Start thinking of the wrong you've done. Say, Oh Allah, I did this, I did that. I'm, I was totally wrong. It was unacceptable. I seek your forgiveness. Don't be embarrassed to ask Allah's forgiveness. He will open your doors. Brothers and sisters, the next surah, and this is the last surah we will be discussing in this part one of Save Yourself series. We have had 30 episodes in total. This is the 30th one. 27 in the evenings of Ramadan plus the three Jumu'ahs that we did have. So this is the 30th one. But in order to complete the rest of the Quran, inshallah, we will have a part two of the Save Yourself series. There was no point in rushing through without having expressed a little bit of detail regarding some of the points that we went through. I'd rather speak slowly and extract beautiful, powerful reminders for myself and yourselves than to whip through it and not have it achieved anything. So this is why we say Surah Al-Furqan, we will end with that Surah, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. The first point, the first point, we need to save ourselves from thinking bad about others. It happens a lot of the times. You work hard, you earn a little bit, and you work even harder, and you earn a bit more. And after 10 years, you afforded to buy a Mercedes, right? And what happened thereafter? You notice the Imam of the Masjid is already driving an S-Class. Subhanallah. Immediately, Shaitan comes to the mind. But he's supposed to be just an Imam. What is he doing? Right? Doesn't Shaitan come? Imam is not supposed to go beyond a Corolla. And if he's got two wives, perhaps a Camry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That's an Imam. He's not supposed to have a car like that. He's an Imam. He's a religious man. We will actually go to him sometimes say, Imam, you know, you're setting a very bad precedent here. Because I tell you, you're supposed to be a person worried about the, dun the deen, not the dunya. The dunya, leave it to us guys. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. These are statements that shaitan makes us say. Shaitan makes us think we are the only people entitled to wealth. No one else must live luxury. If they live comfortable, they've, they're either dealing in drugs, they're either stealing, pinching. You know, they call them hot products. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But why do we think so evil about others? They are also sweating. Perhaps Allah dangled a carrot for them or not just dangling, but Allah gave them the carrot. Subhanallah. Allah might have opened their doors in a miraculous way. The man came out to work first day and suddenly a two million rand deal. And you've been trying for so long. It was the barakah. Maybe his, you know, sajjada, it's called a musalla as well. Perhaps he ripped it in the night making dua to Allah. And here comes the morning and all the money starts flowing. It can happen. The wealth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that. So don't feel in your heart, what is he doing? How come he's in the market? How come he's doing well? He's not supposed to be dealing in motor vehicles, for example. He can't have such a luxurious home. Why? How come? No, no. My brothers and sisters, that was something uttered from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam going down. When people started picking on messengers, they picked on them in this regard. How come he's got money? Why does he go to the market? How come he's wearing nice clothing? How come he's got the perfume that smells, the whole masjid smells up? Allahu Akbar. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time, 
the kuffar of Quraysh, they started passing comments. If this man was a true prophet, if he was a real religious person, he would never be found in the market, nor would he be found eating all sorts of foods. He would be a simple man and he would not be interested in the marketplace. So it started hurting Muhammad وسلم, because he knew that these people are making a mistake. I'm a messenger from Allah. They are uttering evil words that will only result in a bad effect on them, not on me. This is why when you speak bad about someone, you're actually harming yourself. Think about it. Save yourselves by not speaking bad about others. When you talk bad about someone, you are harming your own self. Stop it. Say good things about them. Say good words about others. So Allah says, verse number seven of Surah Al-Furqan. وَقَالُوا مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ يَأْكُلُ الطَّعَامَ وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقَ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مَلَكٍ فَيَكُونَ مَعَهُ نَذِيرًا They said, why is this messenger eating such food? And why is he going into the marketplaces? Allah should send down an angel to be with him as a warner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us from uttering words against our brothers and sisters. No. Many verses later, verse number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gives him a comforting word, a verse that we read today as an ibadah, an act of worship. He says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا إِنَّهُمْ لَيَأْكُلُونَ الطَّعَامَ وَيَمْشُونَ فِي الْأَسْوَاقُ we want you to know that we have never ever sent any messenger before you except that he has also eaten food and gone into the marketplace. So you don't worry about them. You carry on doing your thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those in a slight bit of authority the heart to increase the salaries of their imams and religious people. Say aloud, Amin. Now you'd better take money out of your pockets and donate to the masjid, inshallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, we look at the ulama, we want them to take us through to Jannah. But in this dunya, we don't even want to help them live a life of a slight bit of comfort. And we want the eternal comfort by the guidance of the same scholars. How? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. I see. Quite a few looking like imams just smiling at me, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, another very powerful point. Do you know that your company affects you? No matter how you look at it, either in a good way or a bad way. It has a positive impact on you or a negative. Make sure you are in the company that is always positive. Look at the verse. Verse number 27 of Surah Al-Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how on the day of judgment, those who had bad company and they, that led them to do bad things, they will regret it in such a way that they will want to eat up their own hands in regret. In the Arabic language, when you say someone is eating their hands in regret, it means it is the height of regret. They regret it so badly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 27. On that day, the one who has wronged himself will be saying, Oh, I wish that I had not had such and such a person as my friend. وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا He will say, I wish that I had chosen the, the path of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I wish that I didn't have such and such a person as my friend. He led me astray after I had seen the right path. I knew I was treading the right path. After that, he led me astray. Oh Allah, I wish I didn't have him as my friend. Brothers and sisters, save yourselves from now by having friends whom when the time of salah comes, they, they are not, they cannot sit until they fulfill their salah. They are restless until the salah is done. Those are the type of types of friends you and I need to have so that on the day of judgment, we can smile and we can go together to Jannah because we've helped each other lead a beautiful life in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we say the importance of your friends. Let's move on. The last few verses of Surat Al-Furqan. 
starting from verse number 63 going right to the end these verses are extremely important because they describe something that should be your dream and mine Allah describes Ibadur Rahman the true worshippers of the most merciful who are they Allah describes them I want to be one of those and so do you don't you you don't you want to be the true worshippers of the most merciful known as Ibadur Rahman so Allah says Ibadur Rahman they have the following qualities and then he makes mention of a long list of qualities I want you to listen to every one of them because you can be from the true worshippers of the most merciful in a way that when you arrive on the day of judgment you are given VIP treatment Wallahi I tell you, my brothers and sisters, those of us who might know how it feels like to be picked out of a crowd and told, you know what, you come through, you don't have to stand in the queue. Subhanallah. Imagine going to the home affairs or going anywhere else or going where there is a long queue and someone knows you from the authorities and they come to you and say, sorry, come, step aside. And you look at them and you start smiling and everyone looks at you and starts thinking, who's he? Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. And you're so happy that, oh, at least my things are all done. In the dunya, it's not so important to get that type of treatment, but it is much more important to have that treatment on the day of judgment. Everyone struggling and you are told, you know, it's very hot on this day. Come, we have a special shade for you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant that for us. So Allah says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The first quality, surprisingly, Allah says, the true worshippers of the most merciful are those who walk on earth with utmost humility. Meaning their character and conduct is developed to the highest degree. You want to be a worshipper of Allah in the true sense? Develop your character, develop your conduct, learn how to walk, learn how to speak, learn how to have a good expression on your face, learn how to have a positive impact on those who are with you, learn how to say good words. You will be a worshipper of the most merciful, the true ones. But if you swear, if you're a person who's arrogant, if you're haughty, if you think that you're better than the rest, how do you expect to be from among those who are a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who are true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah says, they are the ones whom when they walk on earth, they walk with humility. When the ignorant talk to them, the true worshippers of the most merciful, they just say peace and they walk away. They don't engage in futile discussion with people who want to argue with people who are ignorant. They rise above all of that. They just greet Salam. That means peace and they walk away. That's it. Some people, they are not worth talking to more than the Salam. We spoke about that yesterday. Sometimes you just want to stay away. You know, this person, I just need to stay. Salam alaikum alaikum as salam. The minute they start a deeper discussion, pretend like you didn't even hear what they said. Pretend like you didn't even hear. You fulfilled the minimum duty that was your salam and the response of it, and you just need to carry on. Subhanallah. Why? Some of the ignorant they are they want to drop you as they themselves have dropped. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only after making mention of character and conduct, he then speaks about the same true worshippers of the merciful. Those who spend the night, those who spend the night for their Lord in the position of prostration and standing in prayer. I call on you, my brothers and sisters and myself to try this, even if it means once in a while, once a month, once a week, once a year, Allahu Akbar, sometime in Ramadan, the last few days, let's go for it. Bismillah, get up a little bit earlier for suhoor. That is the time for tahajjud and make a little bit of salah for the sake of Allah. Cry to him, seek forgiveness. Don't just get up and want to munch at that time of the morning and fight for your food and your porridge. No, get up and call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, bless me, grant me goodness. My children, my offspring have a concern for the generations that will come after you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of it. My brothers and sisters, it's not impossible for us to do it once in a while. And I tell you, if you do it once in a while, it will lead you to increasing the frequency. You'll enjoy it so much. It will increase in frequency. May Allah grant us regularity in that which is over and above the farad, over and above that which is compulsory. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Then 
Allah says they are the ones who invoke us. They call out to us. We spoke about how they spend the nights in Salah, but they also call out to Allah. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّ نَصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ They are the ones who say, O oh, our Rabb, O oh, our Rabb, turn away from us the fire of Jahannam. Save us from the fire of Jahannam, the fire of hell. Save us from it. They are worried that if we die, we do not want to be cast into hellfire. My brothers and sisters, keep on repeating that dua time to time. When you think of it, just say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, grant me savior from the fire of Jahannam, etc., etc. These type of duas, they will help. Sometimes we, we are sitting quietly. Our mouths are shut. Moisten your lips a little bit with some of these good words. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have a battery by your lips so that your tongue needs a charge in order to wag. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. If it was gossip, people would engage in it without any form of batting of an eyelid. But when it comes to remembering Allah, seeking his forgiveness, asking Allah to protect us from Jahannam, then people are found lacking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Then Allah says, the true worshippers of the most merciful are those whom when they spend, they are wise in spending. They are neither extravagant, nor do they hold back. There is a balance between the two. Some people are so miserly. They hold back onto their wealth. Let them know that wealth is not going to help them when they die. They'd rather spend it in a good way. And some are such, they will only waste money. That's it. Where it is needed, they don't have the brain to spend it. Where it is not needed, they will throw it in the thousands and the millions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those. The true worshippers of the merciful are those who understand how to spend. They are the ones who when they spend, they are neither wasteful nor are they miserly, but they have a balance between the two. Then, they are the ones who do not call out to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a very, very powerful verse. They are the ones who do not call out to anyone besides Allah. If you know your Quran, if you have read the English of the Quran, if you have understood the Quran, the word of Allah, nobody will be able to fool you in this regard. If you are fooled in this regard and you think that you can call out to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it definitely means you haven't read the Quran. You haven't looked into the words of Allah because the primary message in the whole Quran that every messenger has echoed in their lives as well is call out to Allah alone. That's it. So Allah says, True worshippers of mine are those who call out to me alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. It is one of the most important aspects of a Muslim and a mu'min. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance and ease. So my brothers and sisters, immediately after that, Allah says, True worshippers of the most merciful do not commit murder, nor do they commit adultery. Subhanallah. You want to be a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No murder committed. You don't take away a life given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who gives you the authority to take away a life that was given by the same one who gave you your life? Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they don't commit adultery. Now you pause for a moment, immorality and adultery. Many people will say, you know what? To a certain degree, I've fallen into that. Someone will come and say, I've fallen into it in a bigger way. Some will say in a smaller way, Allah doesn't want you to lose hope. You can still be from among those who are true worshippers of the most merciful. Because immediately after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how Allah chooses to speak about Tawbah when it comes to these two things, especially after immorality. Allah says, if you really want to be a worshiper of the most merciful, the exception, the exception meaning those who will be punished, there will be an exception. And the exception is those who seek forgiveness and do good deeds after they have sought forgiveness. Allah says, we will take their bad deeds, we will convert them into good. 
on the right side of the scale on the day of judgment. That's how merciful we are. So never lose hope. No matter what you've done in the past, the past is the past. Let today be a day when we turn over a new leaf and we start for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, that is not impossible. It is not impossible. You just require dedication, commitment to the one who made you. And I promise you, your life will begin to blossom in every single way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, those who repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins. Those who do not bear false witness. Those who don't lie. This is speaking about bearing witness, not only in a courtroom where the Qadi is or the judge is, and you bear false witness. That is a very high level of disbelief in Allah and hypocrisy. It is one of the major, major sins. The Prophet ﷺ set up and he said, Allah wa qawlu zuri wa shahadatu zur. He says, those who bear false witness, there is a severe warning for them. Severe in this world and the next. Even sometimes amongst ourselves, we lie. We lie to one another, about one another. It's false witness at times. We're bearing false witness about someone else. Why? My brothers and sisters, let's not do that. Let's be honest people. Let's be upright. We will earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the true believers are those whom, when they pass by something futile, in vain, they don't waste their time. They just walk past. You see people doing something that is nonsensical, something that is a waste of time. If you're a true worshiper of Allah, you know my clock is ticking. The hourglass that I have, the grains of sand regarding my own life are actually dropping as I am breathing. So I don't want to waste it now sitting and, you know, spending time doing nothing. I'd rather do something constructive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. That's quite a deep one because today wasting time is interpreted in by different people in different ways. For some people, you know, a football match is a waste of time. And for others, that's a religion on its own. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You need to strike a balance. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I am saying don't do so prioritizing it over Allah and the instructions that Allah has placed over you. People are watching a football match and I tell you your two favorite teams are playing. And guess what happens? Suddenly it goes into overtime because the score is a draw one one or not not. And that's the time when the Muaddin calls for Salatul Maghrib. What happens? That is when you will be able to realize what you've done. If you can turn it off, get up, answer to Allah. You have succeeded, my brothers and sisters. You have succeeded. But if you think, nah, come on, only today. Today it's okay, I can delay. My brothers, a football match. And you gave up your link with Allah. It could have been the time when the last opportunity for you to pray on time. It has happened to people. People have died like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah says, and this is a beautiful point. Those who are true worshippers of the most merciful, when they are reminded about anything to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they never ever turned, turn a deaf ear or a blind eye. They take it seriously. They are thankful and they are grateful that they have been reminded. If you're a true worshipper of Allah, reminders of Allah and his verses and the hadith and the upright deen, they will make you happy. Subhanallah. They will make you really, really happy. I'm so excited that someone reminded me to fulfill my salah. Let me take it seriously. Those are true believers. And the last point Allah says, they are the ones who make dua for their children and the offspring, not just for themselves. They are the ones who say, oh, our Rabb, bless us, grant us from our spouses and our children, make us or make them the coolness of our eyes. But they don't stop there because many of us, we make a dua, oh Allah, make my son regular in salah, but you don't read salah. Oh Allah, make my son a person who's not on drugs, but you on drugs. Oh Allah, make my son not go to the casinos, but you gambling. Oh Allah, protect my son from pornography, but you watching pornography. What's the point? So this is why when we make dua for our children at the end, this dua says, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama, Make us the leaders of the righteous ourselves, then our children. Brothers and sisters, I'm sure a lot has been said. I'm sure we've learned a lot of lessons. We need to save ourselves. 
and our offspring from the fire. I end with verse number six of Surah Al-Tahrim. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your family members from the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant a savior from the fire. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.